Now I'm going to show you how to make one of these simple wire hangers. I used to use these years ago for hanging plastic decoys on the likes of tree branches, on top of gates, barbed wire fences and unlike a bamboo cane or a stake which actually holds the decoy in a rigid position this will let the decoy rock and move a wee bit in the wind making it look more lifelike and realistic. Now it's made out of this stuff here it's a heavy duty galvanised fencing wire or I know it more as bull wire. Now this usually comes in coils of 50 to 100 metres long for farm yard fencing but you can get uh, an equivalent of it in uh, DIY and garden centres usually much smaller coils of 15 to 20 metres for about £7 or so. It works best with one of these here decoys with the old type of small fixing hole mounted in it rather than the much larger ones that are fitted nowadays for the supplied stakes. You'll also need a golf ball. This is the work as a ballast weight. You can see here with the original one that I made years ago I used a fishing weight and uh, you can see if I can get close enough to the camera, there's a couple of pellets stuck in it where I must have got bored one day and took a practice shot or two at it. But uh, working with uh, melted lead is very dangerous, not only for the sheer heat involved to melt it, but also because of the toxic fumes it gives off. So working with the uh, golf ball is a much safer and easier way to go. You'll also need a good set of strong pliers to help uh, cut and uh, bend this into shape. And you need a couple of drill bits, one about 4.5 to 5 millimeter, and the other about 6.5 uh, to 7 millimeter. And uh, we'll show you how to make one of these now. So the first step is to cut your piece of wire, about 27 inches or 69 centimeters. I'm using a couple of brick here to weigh the wire down and keep it still while I cut it. Then bore the 4.5 millimeter hole in the tail of the magpie. Now you take the wire you just cut and bend about half an inch of the end of it into an open hook shape, like so. Then hook this into the hole you just bored into the decoy's tail and bend the wire roughly to the contour of the decoy's body. Then using a marker, mark the edge of the mountain hole on the wire. Then take your pliers, I'm using a pair of vice grips here because uh, it holds it much steadier for the camera. Clamp on at the edge of the mark you made and bend up at 90 degrees and you should have something that looks like this. Then about an inch or so up from that bend, clamp on with the vice grips again and bend the wire back down round again in a hairpin bend. You might need to use the pliers and cramp the uh, bend in the wire small enough so it fits in the uh, mountain hole and the decoy. Then again take the vice grips and clamp onto the wire parallel with the first 90 degree bend you made and bend the wire back again at a 90 degree angle. So you've got a complete loop in it. Now, clamp onto that last 90 degree bend with the vice grips again and bend down the way almost 90 degrees in a slow radius bend. Like so. Now, take the golf ball and bore a 6.5 to 7mm hole in it. You're best to use a solid golf ball if you can get one. The first ball I used had a liquid centre in it which ended up an absolute mess. It's almost impossible to bore a clean hole uh, through one with a liquid centre. When you've that done, feed the ball onto the end of the wire. Then take your vice grips 
I nip on about an inch and a half from the end of the wire and bend it out round 180 degrees to create another loop again. Then crimp the end of the wire tight together but lay a teardrop shape loop at the end of it. Then slide the golf ball down onto this and lock it in place with a tap or two in the bench. Now to put it in place just put the hook into the tail of the magpie and push the loop into the mountain hole in the decoy. You might have to bend the counterbalance weight back and forth a wee bit to get the magpie to balance right but once set it will sit in almost anything. Of course you need to spray the golf ball on the wire a wee bit with some uh, primer paint. I'm using some black and some green here. Don't use anything shiny like matte or gloss or it'll stand out a mile. But in the field it comes in quite handy. Once set it can sit in almost anything and with a wee bit of breeze it'll sit in bob and weave about the place to looks quite realistic. In fact, that'll sit in almost anything.